So here is the result that we're looking to get to. Thought I'd show you ahead of time to show off a little bit. Flattening the back, regrinding the bevel, removing all the rust on both. Restoring the integrity of these parts, these pieces, removing any damage. and finding the maker's mark. Let's check out the video. So here are the two antique hewing hatchets. The, this particular one is in rougher shape. It's very pitted, especially on the uh, flat surface the opposite side. Handles in very rough shape as you can tell. And I'm not even sure that this is the original handle. It's not a typical hewing hatchet handle, uh, which should be actually curved away from the flat surface. There's some mushrooming to the head as well. If you're not familiar with mushrooming, it's when a metal tool strikes another metal tool, it will cause it to deform over time and create this kind of a lip. So uh, I'm going to actually clean that up as well. This is the flat surface I was referring to. The smaller hatchet. It is in a little bit better condition as far as the head goes. Uh, the handle, though, is uh, not anything that you typically see on a hatchet, uh, on any tool really. And in both cases on these hatchets, they've actually inserted a metal spike of some sort to, uh, to keep the handle from flying off, uh, the head from flying off. So here's a, just a quick test as a comparison. This small hatchet is one that I had uh, prior. It, uh, it is a hewing hatchet head, uh, and I did already replace the handle. Uh, unfortunately, with this particular head, somebody had gone and sharpened uh, both faces more or less equally and uh, it's still usable as you can see yeah, it does a pretty good job this, this particular hatchet could be sharper so here's a test of the small hewing hatchet the the one they're going to be restoring and of course because it's not sharp we really should not expect that it's going to do much at all that's the result that you're seeing here larger one. Uh, it's in rougher condition, so again, the same kind of thing. You shouldn't expect any good result, no matter how much force you apply. Um, you know, I haven't even really worked on a tool that's in this bad a condition before. Okay, so you can see what I was referring to about the handle. It's uh, it was in such bad shape that it actually fell off. So it rotted, and they had, had rusty nails in there. Uh, obviously, it needed to be replaced. So here I'm, I'm struggling to remove the nail. And like I said, I'd never actually worked on a tool that's in this bad a condition before, so I didn't quite know what to expect. And I ran into some problems. Um, and trying to remove the nail and trying to remove the material that was left over from the handle. So clean up with a, a wire wheel, 
getting uh, some of the rust off. Getting all the rust off that I can. And here is that mushrooming. You can see it a little bit better now. So uh, some people don't like to do this. Uh, I, I think it's necessary in this particular case uh, because of the kind of hatchet that it is. Just, uh, it's fairly cleaned up. You can see flat those surfaces. It doesn't. L it looks new. It's a bit of a problem. So you'll see here what I do to to kind of blend it in a little bit more, make it look more natural. So filing that front edge to clean it up, it, uh, again, it was in really, really rough shape. So typically you do this if you want a good reference edge uh, to work to. So I use this, uh, this old planer knife as a straight edge. And what I wanted to try and show here was that there is actually a crown that, uh, that we need to keep. This particular hatchet was designed with that, and I think it's actually fairly well designed. So there's also a crown on that front edge that uh, we'll keep, we'll try and keep. It's very minimal. So I don't like to do this if I can avoid it, but because the pitting is so bad, I decided to use the, the angle grinder. Uh, sparks coming off look like uh, high carbon steel sparks. They fork off in multiple directions. So imagine doing this with a hand file. It would just take uh, ages to do. Uh, the, the pitting, I don't know how exactly deep that was, but you know, it's, uh, it's deeper than you could get through with a, with a hand file. So here all I'm doing is kind of uh, getting a sense of where the high spots are. same process just a little bit more refined you can see developing a few of the high spots I'll take them down again with the grinder and continue to work at it So I switched over to a 40 grit uh, flap wheel on the grinder and that'll give a nice polished surface there. Uh, one thing I found with this particular hatchet is that the, the steel, uh, especially along the edge, seems to be really tough steel and that's pretty typical of the older hatchets, so older tools. They uh, definitely had good quality materials to work with. trying out a trick that I learned from YouTube, putting a little chalk on and um, prevents the buildup of steel particles from um, preventing you from, from filing. What I'm trying to identify here is I was able to see the high carbon steel lamination to the mild steel or, or even wrought iron, I'm not quite sure. And um, you can't really see from the video, unfortunately. There's a line that uh, you could see that where the, the two pieces were forged welded together. Switched over to 400 grit wet dry sandpaper. 
and from the 400 grit work our way up to 600 grit and then all the way up to 2000 grit. So in this view you can actually get a really good sense of that flat surface and why it was so important to remove that lip the mushroom I referred to earlier. Um, that surface is the one that more or less rides along the material that you're hewing. And if you had that mushroom defect on there, you wouldn't get the complete flat surface, uh, the contact that you're looking for in the operation uh, of the tool. So I took the flap wheel, I just did a quick cleanup. I don't really want to remove much of that patina, I kind of want to preserve that, but um, you know, to give it a general overall sheen uh, along the high spots is, is okay, it's a look that I like. So here you can see that uh, we were able to keep that crown. It's a lot more visible now without the rust on there. And the result is, uh, is pretty good. So I should mention, this is only a preliminary sharpening. Uh, at this point, because there's so much more work to be doing on the, the handle, uh, we'll be doing a leather sheath. You don't really want a completely sharp edge, you're going to cut yourself with that edge. Uh, you could protect it with tape or so on, but uh, it's better actually just to leave it uh, not quite sharpened, follow up at the very end, do your final sharpening at that point. Uh, one thing you got to be really careful with with these um, edges, as you get a, a finer and finer edge, if you use a grinder, you're going to heat up that surface. So you can see I was adding some water. and. Uh, if you heat it up too much, you'll be drawing a temper and potentially um, creating uh, an edge that is not quite as durable or not, um, not going to last as long for this tool. So again, a little bit of cleanup with the, uh, the same flap wheel. So you can see there's uh, there's some rust coming off of there. I decided to take some fine sandpaper and remove some of that rust. Again, I, I kind of want to preserve the look. You can uh, you can soak these in vinegar if uh, if you like. It's uh, acidic. It will actually eat into the metal and remove the rust. The, the problem with that is it completely changes the look of the tool. Um, a very matte finish, a very uniform finish across the the entire surface. So I I, pres I prefer to kind of preserve the, the look of these old tools if I can. Um, also you need to make sure that it's functional if you want to use it. So like I mentioned, a little protection on that edge. It, it was getting fairly sharp. It's not completely sharpened, but sharp enough that it could cut you potentially. So I uh, follow the exact same process for the smaller hatchet head. After removing all the rust, you can identify the maker or the brand, and in this case is Anchor. And here's the result for the small hatchet head. Again, not uh, final sharpening. Uh, we're getting pretty close. I did some additional correction on this hatchet. I noticed the curvature was not uniform, so I tried to correct the curve a little bit. I couldn't, um, I couldn't correct it completely. I'm showing here that this was a forge welded head. You can see there's a little seam there to identify that. There's the two heads.
part two of the video is going to be making a handle, splitting it from one of these two pieces. A hewing hatchet has some particular properties that are required in the handle. Um, the handle should actually be bent slightly away to keep your hand away from the surface of the material that you're actually hewing. There are a couple ways to do that. Uh, with this particular piece here, it's fairly dry. It's pretty straight, so uh, we could split it out and then bend it afterward. You can steam bend it. I'm going to try actually bending it uh, and using a torch to set the shape uh, as just a, kind of a new technique that I've never tried before. Uh, with this particular one here, it has a bend already in the wood, which is really ideal. Uh, for this purpose. the This material is way too long, so we'll end up cutting it to length. This particular log has some additional properties. You can barely tell, but it has a bit of curl to it, so that's going to make it difficult to work with hand tools. So this uh, particular log may not be a good choice, but we'll try it anyway. So because no hatchet head is uh, any good without a handle, that is going to be uh, viewed in part two.